for an organization called the United Nations Association in Canada. Um, this is not to be confused with the giant organization known as the UN, we do not work for the UN, but a small scale UN uh, based in Canada. And we run a series of programs that work to educate the Canadian public or all individuals living in Canada on the mandates of the UN. So peace, security, uh, justice, equality, education. Um, the program that I run specifically is a national three-year program called Multimedia and Multiculturalism. Uh, we're just about to finish off our second year. And what it does is it's a critical look at how diversity and um, diverse groups are represented in the media. Um, about five years ago, our organization did a large-scale research project with youth across Canada. Um, and we asked them, how, how did they feel when they watched the news? How did they feel that, how did they feel like they were being excluded from, from everyday structures, from everyday narratives? And they said that they linked their sense of belonging to the way that their communities were represented in the media. And they felt like when they watched the TV, when they listened to the radio, when they read the newspaper, mainstream outlets weren't doing anywhere near as good a job of representing what their lived experiences were, what their community's lived experiences were. Um, and whenever they did see stories about um, the regions they came from or their cultures, they were always really sensationalized. So you know, we had young Muslim girls who were talking about, you know, the only time I ever hear anything about my community is when there's a mosque being burnt down. So what our project looks at is, um, first of all, um, enabling youth to develop a critical eye when they're looking at the media to see where the slant is coming from. And also, um, we do media literacy workshops all across the country to arm youth with tools to create their own media that's more inclusive, that allows them to be telling their stories or to be creating stories from, uh, from their own minds that they believe to be relevant and to share. So we, we um, work in uh, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Vancouver, um, with uh, universities, media outlets, uh, high schools, public interest groups, newcomer organizations, and we just build activities based on the needs of every community there. So it's a lot of fun. It's really interesting to hear um, from region to region how how differently media and diversity and multiculturalism are affecting people. Because um, every city in this country is so different. Any of you who have been outside of Ottawa can probably say that Ottawa is different from Vancouver, from Toronto, from anywhere else you may have been, and that's just in Canada. So that's a bit of background on what I do. Um, I'm going to, this is for sure, because I'm a visual learner, so I like to project that on my audience. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about multiculturalism, race, diversity a little bit. I'm not exactly sure what everybody's working knowledge on these concepts are, so I'm going to throw a word out and then I'm going to ask you to throw some words back at me and then we can work through. Does that sound good to everybody? Okay, I just want to test your outdoor voices, so if on the count of three you guys could just say ah so I can hear you. One, two, three. Ah. Okay, just making sure you're warm in there. Um, so. Alright, give me some words. Diversity. Okay. Respect. Okay. Conflicts. 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 Okay. Festivals. Hmm? Festivals. Festivals. Okay. <laughs> that's the first way. Prejudice? Prejudice? For prejudice? Anybody else? Oasis. Thank you for us. Okay. Racism. Um, what is race? Does anybody want to take a stab at that? Remember, this is an open safe space. I 
always been told that there is just one race, human race. So yeah. each time I see that we make categories with different race, I just have, I just don't understand. So for me, there is just one race and not different one. I mean, yeah. we cannot be judged by the color of our eyes or hair. So why the color of the skin? So yeah. okay. And anybody else? There's no right or wrong answer. I just want to know where you guys are at with the concept. Just to it's basically a way of categorizing a whole bunch of different people. Right. Exactly. So you're both right. Um, there are two. There are two understandings of race right now that operate in most of society and in media. There is an understanding of race as. Um, wilderness. Oh, nice. That's a great name. There's, um, there's the idea that wilderness has put forward that uh, race is um, a way of segmenting humans based on their, their physical traits. So people are different based on what they look like. The other school of thought is that race isn't something that actually exists. It's something that we made up in order to reinforce hierarchies. So looking at certain people as being better than others based on their, their traits. Um, historically, race is an idea that has been used to enforce slavery. Um, during the slave trade, it was believed that black people were better, better slaves because they had more, they had physical traits that allowed them to be better at manual labor. So over time, a lot of these ideas that sort of developed and rooted themselves during colonial era, era have sort of stuck with a lot of um, media that has developed, particularly in the West, uh, particularly in, in Canada and the States. So um, that's kind of how race has been understood. So using that, a lot of the language that we're he hearing in the media, we hear terms like um, we hear terms like visible minority. Uh, we hear terms like ethno-cultural groups. We hear terms like racialized. So these are all ideas that everybody has understood to be real mm -hmm. and normal and reinforce that, that old school narrative that people are different and some people are better than others. Um, so, uh, in the media, like mostly when you guys watch the news, do you see a, a certain proportion? Do you see, what do you see when you watch the news? When you see newscasters, are they? They're all white. They're all white, okay. Mostly male. Mostly male, okay. A lot of the females have blonde hair. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're all. Okay. What do you see? I don't think they're all. I think my first thought was it depends on the station you're watching. Okay. You watch City TV in Toronto, which was the first kind of a channel station, the first people to take away the desk to be like hip downtown. Um, they had they were and they were the first people to have more multicultural um, hosts and anchors, news anchors, whatever. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, I can name a lot of people that, like, you know, Sue Hannah Marshall on CBC, there's a lot, Adrian here, but there are a lot of people now. I think CBC has made an effort, a strong effort, and uh, that doesn't mean the way they cover stories is not, I don't know what you call racialized, biased, whatever, mm -hmm. hierarchy, whatever you want to say, but I, I don't believe that it's all like, okay. And even on, like, CTV and places like that. Okay. Um, anybody else? Well, if you go with your population, mm -hmm. you see more white, you see one black, and you can see 20 whites. So, Maybe. So, okay, so building on that, currently in Canada we have, give or take, uh, in like the nation as a whole, we have 23% of the individuals in this country are foreign born, immigrant, or people of color. Okay, that's not including people of European descent who would appear white, but who could be from ethno-cultural communities. Um, in the newspaper industry, 3% of uh, all content is produced by individuals who are from core foreign-born or for a foreign descent. Um, on Canadian TV, 4% of females and 12% of males are from non-dominant, non-white groups. Um, so that obviously shows that there is not a proportional representation um, within the media versus what's happening, like what the makeup of this country is. And the growth, like K 
Canadian, in Canada, diversity is growing exponentially. So while there may have been, these stats are based on the 2006 census. So there's obviously been a great deal of growth since then, but there's been a really marginal amount of growth in what we're actually seeing and hearing in news content. Um, the same can be said for TV, for movies. We see a lot of whitewashing. It's very rare that you'll see a movie where, um, where your, anti your protagonists or your heroes are a person of color. We're seeing more people of color in, within film, but a lot of the time they're playing their other. So they're playing roles of somebody who is, who is like special or exclusive or, or different in some way. Um, even with women, when we watch, like for instance, has anybody seen the movie Kill Bill? You know, great movie. Um, I think Quentin Tarantino did an awesome job of having two, like, two female, uh, you know, two female, like, strong female characters. But if you look closely, the female hero, Uma Thurman, was blonde and white, mm -hmm. and uh, the antagonist, Lucy Liu, was, uh, was Asian Chinese, and, you know, kind of sinister, kind of evil. So while there is that inclusion, there's still, there's still no, they're not giving them the right. same, that same role. And so there's still this othering that's happening when we're watching the media and when we're hearing stories. Um, there's been responses to these. Florence mentioned this in our, in our discussion group about how uh, we have a lot of like, alternative media coming up. We have a lot of you know, blogs and online, like smaller productions and community outlets who are creating media that sort of tries to cater to, to more ethnic populations. But at the same time, these are organizations, like ethnic media, we're seeing, uh, what's an example of that? Chin. Chin, for instance. But still, it's not being included in mainstream narrative. So it's not being included at the same time. They're, they're often aired at different times of the day, not a time when everybody would get to see these news programs. So that's just an idea of, is that something that everybody was kind of aware of when they were watching the news, that idea? Or is that something you were seeing? Did that resonate with you at all? I just want to pause and see if anybody has any thoughts. I also want to see how much time I have. Three minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, um, the other thing I wanted to mention, I guess, is um, do you want to talk about intersectionality or shall I? Go for it. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you pick up whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anybody know what intersectionality is? Anybody familiar with that concept? So, a lot of times. like that wood because I can't even. Oh, use of course. Colors. I'm going to use red just for you. Mm -hmm. Nice juicy red marker. So intersectionality. Um, one. Oh, oh, just before I explain the actual theory. Um, I think a good way of looking at it is when we're, when we're driving and we come up to an intersection. An intersection is what happens when a few streets meet, right? So intersectionality refers to, intersectionality in this case, we're talking about how different elements of a person's identity make up who they are. Um, a lot of the time when we're talking about race or visible minorities, we're seeing and we're seeing a person's color that often just assumes that that person is just that color and nothing else. So. We're talking when we're when we're watching the news, for instance, or when we're watching a story, or reading, or sorry, or watching a movie. If there is some kind of representation of a, a person of color, it's very rare that there will be anything about their identity that goes beyond their face or their physical traits. You never look at them as maybe she's brown and gay, or maybe she's brown and gay and. Uh, you know, is differently abled. It's always about one thing. So intersectionality is the idea of looking at people's identities as being multiple and having different identities to them. Now, why does that, how is that relevant to what I'm talking about? Because when we do see people of color in the media, it's very often that they're portrayed as just being that one thing. And there's no intersectionality in terms of their identity, which is exclusionary because it makes people, it, it, reinforces this idea that people are just a color. It reinforces the idea that like people are just different and people look different and that's what makes them different as opposed to as opposed to different elements of a person's identity, of a personality that makes them a whole person. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Does 
anybody have anything they want to say about that? Do you think it's like very superficial? Yeah, very much so. So it's also like the idea of the um, heteronormativity, like there's a, yep. there's a norm and that if you're not heterosexual then you're somehow abnormal or like you're saying there's like a racial normativity yep, or the white just called the norm. Very much so. Else, some kind of special interest. Mm -hmm. um, I know I have like 30 seconds left, so I'm just going to touch really quickly on this lovely point that Alison brought up, Canadian policy. So it's been about 30 years since the Canadian government created the Multiculturalism Act. Um, that came about under Trudeau and then was reinforced under Mulroney and was echoed by the CRTC. So there are actually four like formal policies in place that are supposed to create a more diverse and inclusive workspace, particularly in the media landscape. But for some reason, that's not being reflected, and I'm not exactly sure why. But there are some ideas that people who are like sitting behind, like as you mentioned in the media, we're seeing Suhana Marshall, we're seeing more people of color on the screen, and we're, you know, there's a slow leak that is that is becoming more inclusive. But at the end of the day, when news, radio, and tele newspaper began, um, it was just a lot of white guys who had control over everything. And it's those guys who are still sitting in positions of power who ultimately, at the end of the day, are still determining what kind of news content we're hearing and who's, who's allowed into the newsroom to create those stories. So although there are formal policies in place to be more inclusive, it's a very slow change because the people in power are the same people who have been power you know, for the past 20 or 30 years when this idea of um, whitewashing as being normal was, was accepted. So. Those are some of my thoughts um, to share with you tonight. Um, I believe I'm out of time. I could talk forever about this. Um, was that helpful, or did that give you guys something something to mull over in your heads a little bit? Yeah. Okay, does that go to my work for you guys? Okay, I'll, yes. I'll turn the floor over to these lovely ladies who are going to take it a step further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.